In this chapter, we're going to be covering deficits, surpluses, and debt. And basically, the heart of the matter is we're going to examine how budget deficits, budget surpluses, relate to a fiscal stimulus. Now, specifically, we're going to be talking about, you know, how do deficits come about in the first place? And when you do have a deficit, does it cause any harm? And... Of course, if you spend more than you take in, in terms of revenue, who's going to pay for that? Who's going to pay for the debt that a nation accumulates? Now, a fiscal package is designed to move the economy out of a recession towards full employment. If you remember um, in when we talked about the business cycle and aggregate demand, we have got a nice little aggregate supply curve aggregate demand curve. Now this is a way of showing using supply and demand to show the entire economy. <clears throat> and what we see here at equilibrium we have what we call equilibrium level of output right here. And this is the equilibrium price level. Now this is where we are in the economy. In other words equilibrium is where you find yourself. This is the amount of output taking place. Now the question is is this amount of output enough to put everybody who wants to work to work? And we call that full employment. And we usually denote, denote, uh, denote this as Q sub F. Now the question is, is Q sub E here equal to Q sub F? That's the question mark. So what if Q sub F is really over here? That means the level of output being produced is less than the uh, full employment level of output. And what we want to do is we want to get the two equal. And one way to do it is to shift the demand curve over to the right. If we do that, we see that we have a new equilibrium level of output and um, I was supposed to make this equal to QF, but let's just assume that it is. Um, so the, what we could do is we could use fiscal stimulus to shift the aggregate demand curve to the right so we can get QE equal to QF. So tax cuts or increased government spending, that's fiscal stimulus. That could shift the aggregate demand curve to the right, um, but this also requires an increase in debt. And so borrowed funds to finance the stimulus must be paid uh, paid back. So one, one way you could look at it is if we're stimulating the economy today through borrowing, that may require in the future um, economic activity to decrease because that's when you have to pay off your debt. So you, 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 there's that saying, you, you rob Peter to pay Paul. And that saying really says, you, you do something short term um, and, and you're eventually going to pay for this later on. And that's what we're talking about right here. So when we talked about John Maynard Keynes and Keynesian economics, Keynes basically highlighted the use of fiscal policy to get the economy to full employment. And that's what you would call a macro problem. A macro problem is simply the economy is not generating enough activity to put everyone to work. How do we get everyone to work? At least in the short term, one way is for the government to either cut taxes or increase spending, which is, which is what we call fiscal policy. And this is what Keynes uh, recommended. Now, when you spend more than you take in, in terms of revenue, you run what we call a deficit, right? And a budget deficit is simply the amount of which the government spending exceeds the government revenue. Now, remember, taxes generate revenue and the government spends that. So let's look at this. So here we have a very simple way of looking at it. Here, the budget deficit is going to take your government spending and if you subtract your tax revenues, that's going to be, if this number is positive, that's going to be your deficit. So let, let me give you an example. Let me just erase this first. 
Now, let's say the government is spending $150 billion, but the government only takes in $50 billion in terms of tax revenue. That means the, the, the government has a budget deficit for that particular year of $100 billion. So, if the government spends less than it taxes, a surplus is created. So, this is just the mirror image of a deficit. So, let's take a look at the uh, budget deficits and surpluses in the United States. Well, I should just say deficits because that's, that's what we've been running for um, since uh, 2006 or well, even beyond that past that and you could see that the de the uh the deficits have been quite some now keep in mind this is in billions of dollars so this is a budget deficit of 1.3 trillion dollars that we ran in 2010 and so you, now every one of these deficits accumulates into the debt now that you have to understand the deficit the difference between a deficit Why did I put a Y there? Deficit versus debt. Deficits accumulate to more debt. So think of deficits as the amount of spending on your monthly credit card statement. Every month that you have a positive balance on your credit card statement, it accumulates in your overall balance, right? And so that's what we have here in the United States. So you could see here that, the, oh, I have, a, I have a more recent picture here, right here. So here what we see here is this is in millions of dollars here on the y-axis right here, right? And when we get to here, that represents a trillion dollars right there. So a thousand million is a trillion, right? Excuse me, a million million is a trillion. And you could see here that in the late 1990s, we were actually running a budget uh, surplus. Relatively small, but a budget surplus. And then these shaded areas that you see here and you see here, these represent a recession where the government, or excuse me, when the economy is contracting. And when that happens, and we're going to discuss this in, in a little bit, uh, we have what we call a cyclical deficit. In other words, the government spends more when the economy goes into a downturn, and it, it's in the form of uh, social, um, welfare, unemployment benefits, things like that. And you could see that the um, um, you could see that growing during a recession. But what's interesting here is the white area from here to here represents a government, excuse me, an economic expansion. Yet we were still running bigger and bigger deficits as, um, and it started to shrink at, um, in terms of the deficits. But then we hit a really big recession here, and then you could see that the uh, the deficits really grew right and then they started to sh uh, shrink remember when i say shrink we're still spending more than we're bringing in in terms of money but the the amount of our deficit the the amount of money that we are short or the amount of money that we have to borrow is less but it's still positive right and then around 2016 it's starting to grow again now, one way to put this into context is take the amount of borrowing that you have to do and look at it as a, as a percentage of the overall economy. This is kind of looking at your, maybe your annual credit card uh, spending over your income as a percentage. Now, you could be spending a lot of money on your credit card, but if your income has grown more than your overall spending, it is a smaller percentage of your overall income. That's one way of putting this, these numbers into perspective. And what we can do here is we could look at the same data, but as a percentage of the economy, GDP, 
and you could see here that we uh, we in the 2000s uh, we we the we went from uh, surpluses here to deficits and the deficits were a greater and greater percentage of the overall economy then it started to shrink even though we have a deficit it's it's a smaller percentage of the economy then we had the big recession here and here right and that really went and it went at almost as high as 10 percent of the overall economy in 2009 and then it started to shrink as a percentage of the economy which is a good thing and then around 2016, it started to grow again. And it's expected in 2019 to be even larger uh, than 2018. So what, what I want to do next is talk about how Keynes ta uh, theorized using fiscal policy to help stimulate the economy.